Hey everyone, my name is Kelvin. Welcome to my channel. All the intro stuff. Anyways, let's get. All right, so where did we leave off? Right, so we're gonna do the individual job pages today and make sure that this doesn't render at 404. So that means first we need a new page and this actually needs to be inside of its own directory called jobs, but the name of it is gonna be the ID. So it's inside of a square brackets like this. And of course we need to create a React component that we have to export defaults. Let's also create a interface here because we know that we're going to server side render the job. So there's going to be a job here, which is a type GitHub job. And then we can always destructure the job from the props like that. And let's also create our get server side props. And this is going to be async. Now inside of get server side props, we're going to do a try catch. And then in both cases, we need to return an object with a props property as well as another object that our job page could take advantage of. We're also going to match the interface that we created. So the props here has to be job and then whatever it is inside. Now, inside of get server side props, we have access to the context object. And this is actually a Next.js type. I don't actually know what the type. Uh, oh, there it is. So this is a type next page context. And from that, we're going to actually get the ID from context.params. Or not, we'll just change this to any since that wasn't helpful. But then after that, let's do a fetch to our API URL. And we're going to pass in the ID from this page. And remember, the GitHub jobs endpoints requires us to put a .json at the end of it. And also because we're using the fetch API, we need to await data.json. Speaking of which, I need to add the await keyword to both of these so that it'll work. And then the incoming JSON is going to be what we're providing to jobs here. And then on an error, we're not going to do anything. Well, actually, let's add another property to our props called redirect. And that'll be a Boolean. So we could add redirect to be false here and then redirect to be true here. And then with the redirect, we could just use the router to push this to the 404 page. Now that this has the appropriate props, we can now do some component work. And the first thing is let's make use of that redirect property. So first we need access to the Next.js router. So we'll import use router from next router. And then we can check if redirect is true. We'll just do router.push to 404. Now there's one problem with this, and that's because the router is a JavaScript thing. So we need to wait until the page is hydrated. And we can just use a use effect here and add this if into the callback and also make sure that it's only called once. So we'll put a empty array here and that'll take care of our 404 page. Now, the last thing I want to do before we check out the browser is to wrap this in a layout. And that'll be the component that we created earlier that wraps around all the other pages. As for the title, let's make a template string here. And I think we'll just render the title, the job title, and that should be good. Um, I think this might fail because up down here, if there's an error, we're getting an empty object. So title is not a valid property, which means we're going to need to add this inside of a ternary. And I think the callback, we'll just call it job listing. I think that's good, right? All right, so let's check out that in our browser. So we'll go to any one of these and it is, oh, we're linking to page instead of slash job. So we can fix that. And that's just a linking problem. I believe we just need to open up the job card and change the href here to be job. Also make sure that this matches the folder that you put at the uh, individual job page in. So where this is. So in case you added an S for jobs, but I think this is good. So let's just go back home and click on another job. So let's go with this one. So we have the layout, which is good. And then we're also rendering the title. It just says full stack on Twikilar. This is not a US job. Um, I'm unsure what language that is. I'm sorry. But let's also check if this does the redirect. So we just delete the last character of the URL. And it takes us to 404. It also takes us to the 404 route, which is a good sign that that's working correctly. The server side rendering part, I meant. Now I'm just going to open up one of these jobs so that it can be loaded while we're making UI changes. And speaking of which, let's go to Figma to look at our mockup. And today we're going to be mainly on this page here, which ideally is not too 
difficult. If you remember the how to apply as well as the job description, we're already given HTML. In fact, I think it'll be a good idea to console log the job from our prompt so that you can see it in the browser. So we'll do an inspect here, open up the object, and you'll see that description has a paragraph tag here, and also apply has an anchor tag. So let's get started on the components. Now I'm going to just add more files into the job module. It's up to you if you want to separate the job card and the job description into different modules. But I'm going to have a file for job description here. And that also means we're going to be reusing the CSS module here. So let's grab the CSS, create a job description props so that we can use it inside of our job description component. And because we're using CSS, this is most likely going to be a div. So I'll leave that as is. Now we know that job description props, we're going to spread out the GitHub job. So we might as well just extend here, but we'll keep the interface in case we add more properties. Now I'm just gonna grab all the properties that we're going to need and you can quickly just autocomplete if you'd like, but let's first render the inner HTML that comes from both description and how to apply. Now you can do that by now you can do that by using a prop on React components called dangerously set inner HTML. Now the reason why it's named that way is because it's potentially dangerous to just set HTML. Sometimes there might be a malicious script or anything. But since we're getting this data, this HTML data from an API like GitHub Jobs, I'm not going to sanitize it or anything because I trust that it's safe. Now this expects an object with an HTML property and we'll just send in the description here. We can also do the same thing for the how to apply. And let's actually make sure that we're rendering this so that we could go back and forth. So inside of the job page, let's add the job description here where we spread out the job and we're surrounding this just in case that there is no job. So we'll do the check with, with Boolean and we're going to cast the job object as a Boolean. Let's make sure we import this and that should do it. Let's go take a look now. So that's all the inner HTML, which means half of this page is basically done. And this part is the how to apply which I think is, is a good starting point. Let's create that component first. So another component called job to apply, I, I guess, I don't know, I'm not great with names. Inside the props is going to be the inner HTML itself. And that's just string. And then we could reuse the same thing. So HTML is going to be equal to HTML here. But this is gonna have an H3 header that says how to apply. And it doesn't matter about the case sensitivity because we're going to add a class name here to just make all of this uppercase. Uh, let's also open up the CSS and we're going to do that apply header first. And as mentioned, we're transforming the text by uppercase and this is going to be gray text. And then we'll also add some font styles that comes from the mockup. So this is poppin, bold, and we also want to assign some line height. Let's also add a class to the container itself, and we can just call it apply. There's not much going on here. I just want to make sure that we have a min width, as well as a margin for when we put it onto the side. And that's everything for this subcomponent. Let's go back to the job description and use it. So we're going to be replacing this entire first part with job to apply. And we're sending in HTML as the how to apply. And we can take a look at what that is so far. So that's kind of right. It's missing something. What's in the mockup? Oh, I wanted to add this back to search link, which means we need to get that icon. So first, let's go into icons, and that's inside common. And the icon we want is an arrow, and it's actually called keyword backspace icon. Make sure that we add it to our export object. And let's go back to how to apply, create an anchor tag with the icon and the title of back to search. And then also to make this anchor tag work, we need to import the next link and then wrap the anchor. And then finally, this needs an, an href. And we're just going to slash. So we're going back to the previous homepage. Now, I don't know if I need to style that. I actually want to style all anchor tags. So we're going to go to the global CSS and change this 
global style of anchor to do bar link and that should give that blue color to every link including the ones inside of the inner html like here all right next we're going to work on the job header which will look a little bit like this so all of this part here and also don't worry about the errors on the side that just happens when i save code that isn't correct this is being live reloaded once we do a hard refresh all of them will go away so the next component is the job header so let's start with the normal boilerplate code for a component now here inside of the job header props we're only getting a subsection of the github job so i decided to just name all the properties just so that this component's a little more generic i've also renamed logo and days ago here because i don't like using underscores and javascript names but we'll go ahead and grab all the props from the interface and we're using a fragment here because i want to kind of have three different divs but i don't want to style this outer thing since we're going to style the entire job description as the container but the first one is going to be h2 where we have the title and underneath the title we'll have the job type and this is the full-time part-time thing which conveniently we've already created the files for so we can reuse the css for job type here and the same thing goes for the icon line and this icon line is for the days ago prop where we also have the clock icon and then finally underneath all of that we're going to need the job image and i guess i can scroll down a bit and it's for the logo and we'll provide company as the alt and if you remember the way we created the job image this also needs a size prop and i believe the size of that image is 50 pixels so we'll go with that and then underneath the job image we're going to have another div and this will make sense soon enough because i'm going to add display flex on the outer div here this collection of elements needs to be inside of its own little container but that's going to be a h3 header for the company name followed by the icon line of the location now without adding any new styles let's add this to the job description component where we'll provide everything as well as the days ago which remember we need to grab that date function called from today as well as the job header components so that'll be job header and we can quickly see where this is at so far so this is not exactly what i expected but we have some things already looking correct so we have the bottom header and the icon line working will find it's just this giant button that we need to fix so open up css as well as the component on the side and first let's start with a class name here to fix up the title line we're first going to add some emphasis on the h2 which will be font of roboto bold and 5.1.5 ram i mean and then some margin on the side and then to fix the positioning of everything let's make sure that the tunnel line is display flex as well as aligning everything centrally and have a little bit of margin everything else is pretty much fine but let's also create a class name of subtitle here and like the h2 we just need to make it bold with some spacing and that's much better now the last thing that we need to do is have this effect where we have two columns but also when it's responsive we have one singular column like this so first of all we're still inside of the job header i'm going to add a media query for the title line and this will be at max width uh, 768 pixels so this is tablet size and we'll just set the flex direction to column and change the aligned items to start now we're going to go to the job description component and we just need to create a class on the container itself and we can just call it job description so not too special here we're just gonna reuse display flex but then we'll use the media query to change the flex from row to column and i'll have that responsive feel to the page so going back we now have two columns and then if we were to resize this we now have everything in one column so our job page is complete now the next step of the application is to create all these search widgets so the search bar as well as all these on the sides and the paginator which i think is going to take a lot of time styling wise so i'll move that to the next video but i want to prepare for it in this video so what we're going to do is go back into the api route because we're going to be using this client side so we'll do a fetch to slash api but with all of the queries uh speaking of which we should probably look at the docs 
And these are going to be the search parameters that we're going to be using. So we can use either description or search, location, and full time. We need a way to get that from the server side. And the way I decided to do it is to make a post request and build up the query server side before we do the fetch. So we'll have access to the request body, which will have term, full time, page, and location. And all of these we're gonna send in as strings, but they could potentially be undefined. And that's why we're destructuring only the body here and not these items. And I kinda hate that I'm doing it this way, but we're going to create a query string and we're gonna mutate it by doing a bunch of if statements. So if any of these items exist, we'll create a template string that adds an and, and then the search query set to whatever that item is. Not exactly elegant, but they get the job done. Now, this is uniform. All of them have an and in front, and we want to get rid of the very first one. So we'll create another if statement that checks the length of the query. So if any of them are true, then the length is going to be at least one, which means this if statement is triggered. And we can just get rid of the first character by doing a substring on the index of one. After all that, the only thing that we need to change inside of our try catch is to add a question mark so that it can accept the query string. Oh, and I also skipped over this location thing. Yeah. So the way that this GitHub API works is that it doesn't actually URL encode the location. Instead, it replaces it with a plus so we need to do that instead of doing the percent 20 percent thing and that's why the replace here is changing all these spaces to plus signs but we should at least test this before finishing the video and we're going to open up the home page and do so and what i want to do is create a function called panel search that does the fetch so as mentioned i want to make a post request and with fetch you have to stringify the body because it has to send it as a string, which is kind of lame, and I prefer Axios over that, but that's okay. So right now I'm gonna send in some fake data. We'll just do full time is true, Las Vegas is false, and the term is closure. Actually, it shouldn't be closure. It will change it to React. The reason why is there's not a lot of closure jobs, unfortunately, but we'll do promise stuff, so we'll make sure that we Add a then to make that into JSON, and then another then to log out the response. And we'll also make a catch so that it also logs out the error. Now to make this work, let's just add a use effect that calls handle search, and we'll do it once on mounts. So this is for testing purposes only. We're gonna actually change this so these values are gonna be set within our application. But for now, we can just go into the browser and go back to the home page and we expect a response back and here's 50 items all react jobs in las vegas or at least they should have been these look like they match the same one as the index page so that means let's uh console log on the server side and what i want in here is this template string so let's try this so I just need to do a refresh here and then go into the console. And we don't have a query string. Oh, uh, ah, I hate using the fetch API. So the body is a string. So we need to do json.parse and this will fix it. Now refresh the page, go to the terminal. We have the full query string. And then if we look into the array, it is empty, which not sure. I thought Las Vegas would work. Change some of this. Let's uh let's change the page to be zero. Maybe there's just not enough to have two pages. Nope, still empty. All right, let's go to California. There's one item in California. Weird. Well, at least we know that our API endpoint works. So as mentioned in the next video, we will go back here and create these search widgets which is gonna be a lot of styling, which is gonna be kind of annoying. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.